Hi guys, I'm going to talk a little bit about your research proposal. Um, this is the second segment in our MLA unit, and that's the first unit of this semester. So you've already done your annotated bibliography, now you want to work on your research proposal, and then the final segment is your final paper. Um, the research proposal is due at the end of week five, so this is the shortest amount of time that you'll have to work on an assignment in the class. So it's something you really want to kind of get started today and hopefully you're watching this video early on in week four um it's so it's due on february 17th that's sunday obviously by 11:55 p.m um it's a major assignment so of course you have 24 hours to turn it in late if you need that extra time and if you need time beyond that you would need to request an extension um, in order to not get a zero for the assignment so that you can turn it in late all right. Um, the research proposal, the purpose of it is twofold. One, it gets you kind of starting to figure out not only the argument that you're going to make, because I ask a little bit about your working thesis statement, but also how you're going to make that argument important, um, because that's something that you're going to want to do by the end of your final paper is not only is this accurate or not accurate or a little bit of both, but why does that even matter? So it's something you're going to be thinking about in your research proposal. Um, this is also going to make help me understand if you are on the right track with your project early on before you've written too much stuff. And then I tell you, you know, you have to do it all over again. So that is also something that I will be looking out for as I grade your research proposals. And then um, there is part of the content in your research proposal that you can um, when you get your grade back and your feedback back, edit and revise and just copy and paste and put right into your final paper. So we're doing a little bit of prep work for your MLA paper, which is always good because when we can kind of, um, you know, do something now for later, that's saves us time and energy. Okay. I'm going to read this. I'm going to show you an example one as well. I'll pause and discuss. If you have questions, email me research proposal, a hundred points. Now that you've come up with an annotated bibliography list of sources for your MLA profession analysis essay, show me that you have an idea and a focus. Create a 1,100 to 1,400 word document formatted MLA formatted essay proposal. So in my last assignment, the annotated bib, I didn't require that you had a word count. You know, we kind of just talked about you have to have a certain number of sources and a certain sentence length. But in your research proposal, you do have to have a word count. You have to have a minimum of 1100 words. That's not terrible. Um, your final paper will be like more than double that. So you have to have, um, start thinking about your word count. Um, and if you're struggling with word count, email me early on so that we can address that problem. Cause I have a lot of strategies and tactics that I can say to help you. Um, but I, I won't know if you need that help unless you send me an email. The proposal should begin with a narrative style discussion. So narrative telling me about yourself, um, discussion and or telling me a story, I guess, an analysis of the reason why you chose the primary source that you're working with and why you've decided to focus on this specific profession. Um, you want to tell me in this first paragraph, your research question and a narrowly focused thesis statement. So it's kind of three parts that I will be looking for in your first paragraph of your research proposal. First, I want to know why'd you pick it? Why is this your topic? Um, is it because you want to go into this profession? Is it because you love this movie or TV show and you just wanted to know? Um, are you thinking of going into this profession, but maybe doing this paper will help you make a decision? Uh, why, why did you pick it? Um, then I want you to ask a question in the middle of your introduction for your research proposal, and that's your research question. So that's the question you're asking yourself that you're going to answer by the end of the paper. And that looks something like, um, are the surgeons portrayed accurately in Grey's Anatomy? Or are CIA agents inaccurately portrayed in Quantico, the TV show, or something like that. That's the question you're trying to uncover by the end of your paper. So that is your research question. Your working thesis statement is where you are right now. What's the answer to that question in one sentence? So that would look something like, and if you can focus it even better, but that would look something like in Grey's Anatomy, while surgical 
procedures are portrayed accurately, nurse to surgeon or surgeon to nurse relationships are not portrayed accurately. And this is seen in episodes five and seven or something like that, you know, kind of starting to narrow down how you're going to make your argument and the topics that you're going to cover. Um, you might also say something like, um, while CIA agents in Quantico ha look like they have a highly exciting job, a real life CIA agent does much more paperwork, spends much more time indoors in the office, and makes far less money than we see on screen. Something, again, something like that. So I'm starting to make my argument and even narrow down the subject matter that I will address in my paper with things like, um, you know, does more paperwork and spends more time in the office and makes less money. So I know that I'm going to cover that in my paper. Um, you won't have to cover all of those things in your research proposal, but you're just starting to make a plan for your final paper. That's why it's called a proposal. Um, okay, the proposal should then start a new paragraph addressing the following questions. One, who is your audience? Two, what is the purpose for writing? Three, what research have you done? How have you narrowed that research? What research do you still need to complete? And explaining all of those things. So something I really need to clarify here is this concept of audience. Um, you are not telling me about the audience for your show. You're telling me about the audience for your paper. So I think that a lot of the times students see the word audience and they immediately associate audience with watching TV um, or watching a movie. <laughs> I don't want you to say the audience for Grey's Anatomy includes Patrick Dempsey fans or includes uh, Ellen Pompeo fans or includes people who loved E. ER or um, things like that, right? That is a, an audience, but that's an audience for Grey's Anatomy. I'm looking for the audience for your paper. So some things to consider is why you're writing this paper because the reason you're writing the paper can help you distinguish and identify and define who your audience is. Um, if you don't know why you're writing this paper other than, well, because my teacher said I have to, um, then think about that. But <laughs> um, some ideas for you to consider might be these. Um, if I were writing this paper, I might say, well, maybe I want to write to prospective students who want to go into a certain career field, but they might think the career is cooler than it really is. So um, future surgeons, for example, they might be surgeons because they watched a lot of these hospital style shows like Grey's Anatomy, but that's not really what the life is going to be like. So I want them to know that now before they get too far into their school and they, you know, have wasted money if they decide to change their subject matter. Um, you might also say why you're writing this paper is because, um, let's see, let me think about this. Um, I'm going to pause this video and think and I'll be right back. Came back with two ideas. Okay, so you might um, notice that there is an inaccuracy on a TV show and it's actually affecting the public's perception of that career field. So what I think of is something like um, a CSI, like a crime scene investigator, or even more so someone who's doing like forensics. Um, I'm thinking of like if the public thinks that it should be that easy to catch a criminal, then maybe the public is thinking that our public servants in that realm of the career aren't doing their jobs because they're having such a hard time catching a criminal. Or if we think of that like regarding law or um, police work or something, if, if this is what we see on TV and we think that that's what the job is doing, then we might be judging those who do this job if it's not done the way that we see it on TV. Um, the other thing is, and, and the two examples I just gave are, like, what if you're not noticing a lot of inaccuracies regarding your show? But what about a purpose for writing if you're noticing a lot of accuracies? Well, um, something that I'm thinking of, and I cannot remember who you are, and I apologize, um, but one of you is writing 
about um, something where a bit a business could hire this individual and use them for their benefit for their company so let's say you're noticing an accuracy and you want someone watching this movie to know that this is actually how the job goes, this is really what they do, so that you can influence their perception of it, but in a positive way, not in a negative way. So I guess it kind of relates to what I said before. So you want to think about when you're addressing your audience, you want to think about your purpose for writing. And that's question number two um, here in this section. So your purpose and your audience are going to go hand in hand. If your purpose is to help people consider their career choices, then you're probably writing to someone who's younger, a young adult, a teen, or even someone who's in a different field and is thinking of going back to school and starting over. But if your purpose is to influence the public, then maybe your audience is going to be um, also people who watch this show, right? Um, or people who are upset about this profession because they watch this show. Um, your audience is never, the answer to this question is never anyone reading my paper or anyone watching this show. It's not, the, it's not good enough. Um, you want to have an, as narrow of an audience group as you can possibly identify. Um, so purpose, we talked a little, bit about, a little bit about that. What research have you done? You don't have to give me every single source. Just give me a synthesis. Just kind of synthesize the ideas that you've come up with. Um, there's a reading in our textbook on synthesis, so you can kind of figure out what synthesis is and how to incorporate it in this, in this element of the research proposal. How have you narrowed your research? So again, you don't have to say, well, I'm not going to use this source. I'm not going to use this source. But like, what are you saying, you know, isn't going to help you? And then of course, what research do you still need to complete? What are you looking for that you haven't been able to find yet? Is there something, you know, where, where do you still need to go? Um, and if, if you don't, if you kind of got all the sources you're going to use, then your answer in this section could certainly be something like, um, I need to go back and rewatch my show or my movie so that I can start pulling appropriate scenes. Okay, the first two paragraphs, um, and you know what, quick tangent on that, this section of the research proposal can be written in any way you think works best regarding paragraph count. So in the example that I'm going to show you at the end of this video, I write the answer to all three of these questions in just one paragraph, but you could spend a paragraph talking about audience, another paragraph talking about purpose, and then a third paragraph talking about research. You could have one paragraph talking about audience and purpose since they're so connected, and then a second paragraph. Um, oh, interesting. Spoiler, sorry guys. <laughs> and then a um, and then a, a second paragraph talking about your re your research. Um, so you can, there's not a requirement here on exactly how many paragraphs you have to have for this highlighted section that you see. All right, the first two sections, I guess is how I will rephrase what I was going to say before. The first two sections, honestly, it's the easy part. Um, the final section is the hard part, in my opinion, because this is the part that you can copy and paste after revision and bring to your MLA paper because this is the part where you show me an example of your analysis and your writing. In week five, the focus of that lecture is going to be on making sure you understand what I'm asking for regarding the structure of body paragraphs with a comparative analysis essay. So we're going to talk about exactly how to structure this information. But if you are going ahead and getting started on doing this section of your research proposal in week four and you want those notes, send me an email because I can go ahead and give them to you um, if you don't want to wait until week five for that lecture video. Okay, so I'm going to read this. Finally, your proposal should segue into a sample analysis of your primary source, so sample of your writing, analysis of your primary source, as it relates to your thesis statement. 
so the argument that you're making, and a synthesis of at least two major secondary research sources that you will, and I say will like you think likely to, you don't absolutely have to, but that you will use in your essay. Um, again, a synthesis is not a summary, but it draws conclusions, makes observations on, or shows connections between two or more sources. So I'm asking you to, in this research proposal, reference at least two secondary sources, and because you will be referencing your movie or your TV show, then you should also incorporate that as a list, a listed citation on your works cited page. All right, so what am I asking you to do here? Your sample analysis will be at least two paragraphs. However, you could do the sample analysis twice with two different scenes. If you are worried about word count, that's what I would do. You could do it three times if you have to, um, but three times should not be necessary. And if you had for word count purposes, if you had to do it three times, I would say that um, you're likely not analyzing enough. Okay, your sample analysis <coughs> is two paragraphs because your comparative analysis, every time you do a comparative analysis in your final paper, you will have two paragraphs. Could you incorporate them into one paragraph altogether in your final paper? Yes, probably. Um, it depends on your writing style, it depends on the subject you're analyzing, but for this I want them to be, each time you analyze something, two paragraphs. The first paragraph, and this is just a nutshell rundown of what I'm going to talk about next week, the first paragraph will present the scene from your movie or your show and tell me what that scene suggests. Okay, so if I'm looking at Grey's Anatomy, and I'm noticing that um, in one scene, uh, in the surgical operating room in the OR, um, the surgeons are always having, or in one scene I notice, the surgeons are having a personal conversation about their lives, then that suggests to me that surgeons, while they're operating, talk to each other about more than just the patient in front of them. Is that accurate? That's the subject of my second paragraph. So I've just shown you a scene from my show or my movie, and I've given some detail on that, described it, what's going on. Here's what this scene suggests to me. So that's an analysis. And now you have to make the comparison. So here's what's on the TV compared to the reality. So the second paragraph is using those sources to say, yeah, surgeons do have personal conversations over the operating table. Or no, surgeons actually focus only on that patient. They keep their mind in the game or whatever. I don't know how you want to say that. Um, but they, they don't do what you see here. So I don't know what the right answer is. So now I'm going to bring in my secondary sources to compare the reality to the show. And that's why throughout the project so far, I've said the best types of secondary sources are ones that talk about the profession more than the show, if the show at all. Okay, so if that is overwhelming, if that's confusing, um, again, two options. You can wait for just an or you can wait for the lecture and the notes and all the practice that we're going to do on that next week, or you can email me for the lecture notes. I'll give you the notes. I will answer questions. Um, but as far as like lecturing on that, wait until week five. All right, breakdown. So this is what you will see in your research proposal. This is kind of a good guide for yourself. Um, you're going to have your one paragraph introduction, one to three paragraphs discussing your research that includes audience purpose, research discussion, and then two to four paragraphs of a sample analysis. At a minimum, you'll have two paragraphs because you're analyzing one scene. But if you don't think that that's going to give you enough word count content, then analyze two scenes so you would say, you know, surge, surgeons in the operating room having personal conversations, do a two-paragraph analysis of that, and then pick a different topic to do a two-paragraph analysis of. Um, you could, you know, you could do the same scene, but also then notice the nurses, like passing the surgeons um, operating tools. Is that accurate? that's fine too. You would still recap that part of that scene and then compare it to real life using your sources. Okay, I'm going to talk a little bit about some penalties and then I'll go into an example and then I'll be done. 
Of course, I need you to have this formatted in MLA format. If your proposal is missing or excited page, I'm just automatically going to take off 10 points. Um, most, I think most teachers would just give you zero for like plagiarism, but um, no one misses work cited pages. I just don't think it's a thing that happens. So you would get no points for the work cited page part of the research proposal, and I would also take off 10 points. So that would be a big deduction. Um, I want you to have at least 1,100 words. This may include the works cited page, so that's all right. Your annotated bibliography is not your works cited page. Sometimes people will just copy and paste that right into the end of their research proposal. Not acceptable. I will I will email it back to you and say, you know, fix this. This is not okay. Um, for every 100 words below the word count, the proposal receives a five-point deduction. Um, so it, truly what that means is as long as you have <coughs> 1,001 words, you won't get any points taken off for word count. But if you have less than 1,001 words, I will take off five points for every time there's 100 words less. So if you have 999 words, it's minus five. If you have 899 words, it's minus 10. Um, for each missing source from the total count, five points will be subtracted from the final grade. So here, if I'm saying I need you to synthesize at least two major secondary research sources, then that means on your works cited page, I should see at least three sources, your primary source and then two secondary sources. If any of those are missing, Minus five. Um, turning it on Moodle, la la la. And then you have kind of how I'm grading this. I'm making sure that you've met all of the um, topics here. Something I always forget to tell my students. Please provide in your introductory paragraph a quick summary of the movie or the TV show that you're talking about. I think that that ends up usually coming naturally, but then sometimes I have students who um, forget to do that. I'm looking at the research discussion. I'm looking at sample analysis. Um, well, we can talk more about that next week. Again, format, grammar, and mechanics, um, and then that you've documented your sources appropriately. Okay, so I'm going to jump over here and look at an example. I'm going to, it's a shorter example. Um, it's not, this does not meet the word count requirements, but it's showing you what I'm looking for regarding the research proposal. It's just a quick thing that I typed up, I guess, two years ago. Um, all right. MLA format. So here's the introduction. And in the example you have a link to, I also have all of these um, specific comments. You can see them and they reflect the comments I'm giving you here. While I have no intentions of ever becoming a surgeon or working in the hospital, the television series Grey's Anatomy has always been one of my favorites due to the dynamic relationships presented by the show's creator, Shonda Rhimes. Okay, so that's part of my narrative discussion. For my final research essay, I want to uncover whether or not the competitive nature between the interns at the once Seattle Grace Hospital, now the, the Gray Sloan Memorial Hospital, is an accurate depiction of the reality of a surgeon's first year of residency at a hospital. Okay, so I'm saying kind of my purpose for writing a little bit, but I'll talk more about that later. The show Grey's Anatomy follows intern Meredith Grey. She works her way from the bottom of the surgical floor up through residency. A little bit of summary. Not only does each episode dramatize what it seems to be like to be a surgeon, it also depicts the relationships between hospital staff at work and outside of work. Um, so I've presented my research question up here when I say for my final research essay I want to uncover and I've written it in not as a question form as a statement either one is really fine here's my working thesis the preliminary research that I've done suggests that while many fields of medicine offer competitive programs the first year of residency when a new surgeon is an intern in a teaching hospital is actually more of a continuation of a student's learning process rather than the cutthroat competition that is portrayed in certain episodes of Grey's Anatomy. So that's my working thesis. That's something I could bring, like I could tailor it and bring it to my final paper if I wanted to. 
Now I'm segueing into one paragraph where I talk about my audience, purpose, and the research that I've done. When considering my intended audience, I would like to write to television viewers who look at Grey's Anatomy and think that if they become a surgeon, this is what life would truly be like. I think, y'all, in this section of my um, research proposal, I could have gone into more detail. Who are those television viewers of Grey's Anatomy who wonder about being a surgeon? Are they people who want to be surgeons themselves? Are they people who um, think, you know, oh, I should have been a surgeon in life? Are they people who are really considering making a change? So I could have explained this in more detail. I wish that I would have. I believe that when professions are over-dramatized in an inaccurate way, those seeking a career or maybe even seeking a career change might make their decision on whether or not to pursue a degree based on what they watch on television. My purpose for writing then is to prove that what is on television is not what is in real life. The lives of surgeons are challenging and exhausting, and not everyone becomes a high-profile doctor with the freedoms that the characters on Grey's Anatomy enjoy. So that's audience and purpose. At the end of my paper, I would like to call to attention all of the misleading portrayals within Hollywood and urge readers to do their research before making a career choice. So even one step further, this is my so what point that I want to talk about at the end of my paper. Like, why am I even doing this analysis to begin with? So far, I have read a lot of personal blogs from interns and surgeons on what life is really like inside the hospital, but I need to continue my research. That's a synthesis of the basic research I've done. Um, I have really narrowed the sources that I've found to only personal accounts, but I also need to search for textbook style sources so that I can not only have subjective accounts to include in my paper, but also objective information. As I broaden my research, I hope to find even more information to help me prove that what we see on TV on Grey's is not the reality of the profession. All right, now I am segueing into, and I'm not even really transitioning here. I'm just jumping into a different paragraph. The research proposal does not follow the logical conventions of essay writing. Getting used to that for this assignment is fine. This is my showing you the scene and saying what the scene suggests part of the research proposal. Gray's Anatomy suggests that competition is at its highest when doctors are first-year interns. There's my suggestion. I'm going to jump into showing you that scene. In an episode from Season 9 of Gray's Anatomy titled Love Turns You Upside Down, viewers watch as two interns, Dr. Edwards and Dr. Murphy, and I'm skipping the character or the actress names here because it's just too much, too many names. Um... Viewers watch as two interns compete for positions in the operating room with the attending surgeon, Dr. Yang. Their competition begins as they attempt to earn favor with Dr. Yang by brown nosing. Dr. Edwards shows Yang that she has knowledge of their primary patient's chart, while Dr. Murphy tries to impress Yang with her knowledge of a recent medical publication. The intern's competitive nature continues to a fault. In fact, later in the episode, the two rush to prep a patient for surgery and almost kill her. They are so focused on their competition that they accidentally plug oxygen into the patient's IV tube, a fatal action that was luckily caught by one of the interns in time. These scenes, okay, so I'm done summarizing my scene. Um, now I'm going back to, again, what it suggests. These scenes in this episode of Grey's Anatomy crystallize the competitive nature of many intern and often surgeon relationships throughout the show. The competition, to the point of almost killing someone, makes viewers think that surgical interns are completely cutthroat, and it would have viewers believe that all teaching hospitals breed some very intense rivalry. So in this paragraph, you do not know whether this is accurate or not. All you know right now is here's what it's suggesting to viewers. So in this two-part analysis, you're saying first present the scene and say what you think it suggests. Now you can argue as to whether that's accurate or not. You don't want to bring in any source material in that first part of your comparative analysis. Many real-world doctors who have actually experienced this situation would argue that, no, Grey's Anatomy does not reflect reality. So now, in the first sentence of my final paragraph, I'm saying, hey, this isn't accurate. 
In fact, two doctors, John Schumann and Brian Zasemski, authors of A Year Inside a Meso Medical Residency Part 1 and Day 1 of Residency Go, respectively, detail what life is really like in that first year of residency. Both report on their first days in their medical residency, I feel like I say that a lot, and note that Day 1 was relatively independent, neither worked alongside another intern directly. Additionally, they agree that it's the intern's connections with each other that makes the job easier to handle. Sosemski reports feeling relief at the other intern's nervous silence, knowing that he's not the only one feeling that way, and Schumann explains that we're in this bizarre and fascinating medical world together. The relationships portrayed in these real-life accounts of residency are much different, much less out for blood than the created for drama television series Grey's Anatomy. So here we get the argument. We're finally able to make the argument in this last paragraph, um, and, and this is what I'm looking for for your research proposal. Again, it, like my example here, not enough words. I would probably either want to like do what I said before and go back and elaborate on purpose or uh, audience, or do another two-part analysis with a different scene on a different topic, um, and that would be fine too. Okay, 30 minutes. I think that's plenty for this lecture. Um, you guys have a lot to think about. Email me if you have questions. Ask me all the questions that you have. I will incorporate questions into this week's discussion board as well, so you can ask each other questions and we can all get the same kinds of answers. Um, but if you are struggling in any way, I am here for you. Just email me and let me know what's going on.